The chairman of the local GOP will connect the dots tonight. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. I just told our guest, he wrote last week, one of the, or last week he wrote, one of the worst, best press releases I've seen in a long time. I know what he's trying to do. I don't know if anybody else can figure out what he's trying to do, but Brandon Bell, the allegedly outgoing chairman of the state Republican Party, is here tonight, uh, and always uh, a good time. We're going to dig into some of the issues uh, that he has both convoluted and we will separately debate, if you can figure that out. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for coming, Paul Manafort, to the federal courthouse. And as he literally wheeled himself out, he got indicted again. So this is this as we as we record our program, and you should know if you watch the show regularly. If you don't, welcome. We tape in the early afternoon, and Paul Manafort got another what, 43, 47 months, whatever, uh, right? So he's a, he's at about nine years, minus good time, minus minus minus. He's probably going to be in jail on the federal charges for some seven years. His attorney, and of course we don't have the the, the highlights here at press time, but uh, watching it just before he got on the set, his attorney comes out and and states that there's no collusion. There's no collusion. Uh, as everyone says, speaking to an audience of one, because he was previously admonished, or at least there was a general statement made by the judge who said, and this no collusion stuff, the collusion's got nothing to do with this case. This is about, this is about financial crimes and uh, international problems and real estate this and bank fraud that. And, uh, this is not about collusion. So what does he do? He goes right out and says, ah, second time in a week, judge, no collusion. Uh, I'm guessing, I'm not expert in this, but I'm guessing that he's going to get whacked by the bar. And then as he simultaneously does that, his client Manafort gets indicted in the, in this, uh, in the state of New York. Uh, not Southern District of New York, but the city district attorney gets him for many of the same issues, some of which may intertwine, some of which may be duplicate. Uh, guys going up the river. And here's the thing. The pardon is only applicable to the federal case. And so now the air is out of the balloon. And maybe that lawyer who made the no collusion short speech is thinking twice about spending some time with the bar based on a checkmate from the DA. Okay. Anyway, uh, the big story that everybody's talking about is this college admission scheme thing. And uh, I think for every parent out there who has toiled hard or student who has saved their money to go to college and those who have just done everything they can to study well and be accepted at college, probably it's freaking out over this whole thing. Take a look. This is a case where they flaunted their wealth, sparing no expense to cheat the systems. Court documents say the scheme was an operation for nearly a decade and involved at least 33 wealthy parents paying $25 million to get their kids into some of the country's most elite schools through falsified test scores or pretending to be student athlete recruits. For every student admitted through fraud, an honest, genuinely talented student was rejected. At the center of it all, William Rick Singer, a college admissions consultant who pled guilty to racketeering, conspiracy, and obstruction of justice. Numerous parents paid Singer between $15,000 and $75,000 to have someone either take the exam for their child or to correct their child's answers afterward. That includes desperate housewives star Felicity Huffman, who posted $250,000 bail yesterday. Fellow Hollywood actress Lori Loughlin of Full House allegedly paid half a million dollars in bribes to get her daughters into USC as members of the crew team, even though they didn't row. <laughs> uh, they didn't row. Uh, I, hate it. I hate it when that happens. Uh, you have to laugh or you'll cry. Here's the thing. Uh, my instinct is that this is not, this is not the only cases. Uh, they, look, the egos in, in modern parent world for where my kid is going to college and the SAT, what did you get, and blah, 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 and all of that, 
I think, have put a tremendous amount of pressure on society. And I think we've got to rethink that from a whole generational point of view, right? In the meantime, this is a local story, too, because the URI tennis coach got jammed up in this scheme. He's alleged to have earned some near $3 million worth of earnings when he was coaching at Georgetown. He's now at URI. There's no indication that any URI hanky-panky went on, and uh, he's been put on administrative leave. leave. Uh, very popular athletic family, the Ernst family. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah, right? Okay. Uh, speaking of, oh, yeah, yeah, can you believe this? Uh, Fall River's got to rethink their charter, don't you think? Put the headline up here, please, Jess. This is crazy. So, so uh, Jaisal Korea is, it is, it is already under a, a legal charge in, in fighting that case. So they're going to say, all right, we're going to recall them. So the people put the petition out, they recall them. But Fall River allows for a recall and a re-election simultaneously. So... 4,700 people, 4,900 people say, yes, recall them. Wins like, you know, 60-40, recall. And, you know, same breath, yes, recall them. Okay, here's a slate of five new people. Well, he's running too. So do the math. He got 4,700 votes to be reelected. The 4,900 who said no on the recall, uh, or, or, yeah, the, the, amount of, the, the recall won. But the, the number of votes between the recall and his reelection are like a couple hundred apart. The problem is just five candidates, and they blew up all the recall votes. And so he's celebrating. It's like, oh, yay, in like 30 seconds. Election results come in. Oh, I've been recalled. Hey, I've been reelected. I want to thank the people. Uh, maybe you ought to revisit your system. Even Brandon Bell wouldn't stand for that, for crying out loud. Anyway, uh, household case mobile betting or GOP suit on sports betting. We got more sports betting headlines. So that was the House early yesterday and then the Senate, too, uh, waiting for the governor's signature for mobile sports betting. And somewhere along the line, we might have litigation. Here's the headline that causes us to swing to our guest. The Rhode, Rhode Island Republican Party, flush with cash to pay lawyers, is ready, is ready, is ready to take on this sports betting situation. You could probably come out on half the stuff that we've already discussed here today. I could hear, I could feel you giggling over there. Uh, you, you know what? When you retire as the GOP chairman, why don't you move over to Fall River and so you can figure that whole situation out? Can you imagine that? I, I have a, I have an SAT word for your viewers. Cacistocracy. What is that? It's the government by the least suitable or competent, and I would say, uh, or the most the least suitable or competent citizens of the state. Uh, or municipality, and I would say that that's what they have right now in Fall River. A wow. cacistocracy. That is just new word. K a k i s t o c r a. Did you just write that down? I did. I wrote it down. I looked it up first. That's good. I was worried I was going to mess that one up. That's crazy. All right. So I don't know where to start. Can we put up Brandon's press release the other day? So follow this. Sports gaming is is out there lingering. The abortion battle, which uh, uh, has ended in the House, but clearly is not over in the Senate, um, takes most of the precedence. And you write something about, I, I read this thing six times, and I still don't know what the heck you were trying to say, although I know what you were trying to say. <laughs> uh, listen, abortion rights, that's a serious conversation. Um, you tried to meld the conversation between it and sports gaming. What were you trying to accomplish, other than one of your classic think out of the box maneuvers. Uh, I heard uh, Chairman Craven from House Judiciary uh, talk about how abortion is uh, a federal constitutional right, uh, which it's not, but there's case law, but there's a right to privacy, and there's all these other things from Roe. Um, but I heard him talking about that, and for months now I've been talking about, almost a year now, about the legality and the constitutionality of sports gaming and expansion of that type of gambling uh, in Rhode Island pursuant to uh, our Constitution, Article 6, Section 22, which I, I know that uh, Attorney Larissa and others have talked about uh, at length. And so I, I just said, look, he's talking about giving us a federal constitutional right that I, for one, think is morally reprehensible, uh, abortion, um, and uh, talking about codifying it. I don't believe it's codifying it, it's expanding it. 
that's another conversation or part yeah, of the conversation. Shows, the Roe v. Yeah. Wade legislation in the past in the House, the argument is that it's not just a codification, that it's an expansion. It's an expansion. That's your point of view. That's my point of view. I mean, I'm against, um, I'm against the Roe v. Wade decision. Uh, for all but one year of my life, it's been the law of the land. I'm 47 years old. For 46 years, it's been the law. Roe v. Wade is not getting overturned anytime soon. I don't advocate and walk around and hope, uh, you know, or, 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 or pray that Roe v. Wade gets overturned. I've accept, accepted the fact that it's established case law. I don't like it, but I've accepted that fact. So when, Chair, when I heard Chairman Craven say that, I believe on Tuesday evening, when he was being interviewed after the House Judiciary approved the measure 9 to 7 before it went to the House floor two nights later, I thought to myself, wow, he's talking about a federal constitutional right that he wants to make sure is codified in Rhode Island law, but he's not even following, they as a body are not even following the state constitutional right, which is for a voter to approve or disapprove, the voters to approve or disapprove of expanded types of sports, of gaming. Okay. So, I don't mean, I, I certainly do not mean to make light of no. uh, the rights of the unborn because I am a, I am a pro-lifer. Um, I am a pro-lifer that did not stand in front of Planned Parenthoods uh, for the last, you know, 30 years since I've been an adult, um, you know, objecting. I, I have friends that are pro-choice. Um, I barely ever debate it. Um, most people before I became party chairman probably thought I was pro-life, but didn't, you know, didn't necessarily discuss it with me. Um, you know, my church uh, uh, is probably 50-50 in the Methodist Church, 60-40 maybe in favor of the sanctity of life, but there's a split there. Uh, so this isn't uh, about religion. This is about morality, as far as I'm concerned. So the re so for me, it's it's woken up people like me, and I'm, I know I'm an activist on the Republican stuff, but it's woken up people like me who are pro-life, and I think that it's the pro-choice folks who have overplayed their hand. Okay, that's a lot. I know. <laughs> we'll be right back to talk about both <laughs> issues. All right. So this was this was the the, the statement that uh, our our guest made last week, and I understand what you're trying to say. Look, the the abortion vote. Look, since you brought it up and made a, I think a, a hearty um, presentation on that. What's interesting, and I don't know if you're getting any buzz. I didn't really think we were going to spend a lot of time on the abortion discussion tonight, so I didn't bring any uh, video from last night. But Senator Raptakis and Senator De La Cruz, new Republican, mm -hmm. uh, were here. And Lou was projecting that the Senate Judiciary will probably go 5-4-no on, on, the, the, on the codification Roe v. Wade bill. So we may have the Senate changing the dynamic of this. Are you hearing anything uh, to the same or differently? What, what, what's your ear to the ground say? I, I was sitting with Governor Kacheri uh, a week ago last night um, in the uh, House chamber uh, listening to the testimony, and I thought it was going to be, uh, it was going to get killed there. I thought it was going to be either an 8-8 vote or a 9-7 vote and in favor of life, and it went the other way. So I, I refuse to make predictions. Mm. Uh, there is a number of ex officio votes, uh, which is wild. Uh, the That'd way be rules. crazy. But I think on the Senate side, ex officio would turn it to the pro-life side. So uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a you know, it is, listen, legislation in our, is competition. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, but, you know, this has got to be a serious competition. We may very well see that the abortion thing doesn't speed through. Uh, and I, for one, happen to be agreeing with you. I don't see that Roe v. Wade is in any kind of jeopardy anytime soon. And some of the ancillary issues, including uh, the, the quick child legislation removal and non-replacement, I think, lend towards some of this expansion conversation. And so even in 93 when the House passed it, they didn't repeal the, the quick child uh, fetal homicide bill. Right. So Which I think it, it, at a reading is problematic, but the concept is not. Of course not. So a, re yeah. a rewrite, I think, as, as uh, Minority Leader Filippi tried to get done, I think is appropriate. Having said that, the sports gaming thing, we are going to have Attorney Joe Larissa here tomorrow uh, to talk to us about what he thinks the constitutional problems are with sports gaming and now the expansion of sports gaming. Sure. But you cite the Constitution suggesting that the vote is necessary for the gaming itself to have started or the expansion on the online handheld version which just passed yesterday. Which one? Both. Well, where you been? 
So, so uh, I mean, come on, that's pretty sleepy. Yeah, it's sleepy, but look, you know, I don't know of any, I, I'll put my attorney hat on for a moment uh, versus GOP chairman hat, and I'll say to you that I don't know of any law that can't be challenged as unconstitutional um, after it's been enacted, 10 years after it's been enacted, 30 years after it's been enacted. Um, of course, uh, ones that would like it to be uh, deemed to be unconstitutional probably would generally act faster. It might not apply to them in certain instances. Um, but I think that the online thing really woke me up uh, even more so. Number one, uh, Senate President Ruggiero, uh, who's apparently not happy with me right now, um, I may want to murder me, um, I believe um, <laughs> did say himself that when it goes to when it comes to online, I was going to say figuratively, but that may that may not be the case. <laughs> so you know, I'm going to I'm just. I know, just, if the authorities need the evidence on the television show, they <laughs> can certainly here. call for it. We'll be happy to have, hand it over. But look, I mean, he, this is uh, this is his um, his project. Um, he's very proud of this project. But he himself said to you, "I believe online needs voter approval, last or disapproval." May. Last, last May. May, he said that, and then and then. Later, though, in the summer, he, he turned his mind. I mean, in the fall, he, he changed his mind on that, having reportedly been consulted by attorneys. And I and, and look, uh, first of all, I've consulted with, uh, uh, I think, the best attorney that I could think of on this subject. The attorneys that the state consulted with, outside counsel, I have a tremendous amount of respect for my colleagues um, that, that, <coughs> that wrote decisions in that, in that regard. Um, I, uh, I'm buying what Joe Larissa, not decisions. opinions, right. I'm buying what Joe Larissa uh, uh, has said. I have no problem with sports gaming. I want to be very, very yeah, clear about it. Yeah, it's a process it. issue. It's a process issue. Well, that's the thing. Here's the thing. When we got to the point where we said, okay, they're going to do this, and it's steamrolling. The governor puts it in the budget without even having this, the, 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 the law adjudicated on a federal level. Um, they were so hot for this. There's very little opposition to the concept. So it's one of these things where it wasn't even a hill I wanted to die on. Like, you know, there's a couple of radio shows. I Don't tell you I didn't tell you so. But yeah. I'm going to say, ah, it's going to say, because I, too, don't have a big problem. I've made a couple of bets. Um, but I do think that the class one and two citation that the lawyers make in the Constitution for the gaming that we've already approved um, is not inclusive of sports gaming. I just don't believe it is. It couldn't have been. It was illegal until recently with Governor Christie's appeal. But it's facilitated by the casino, and that's why that's the underbelly of the argument. Now that we have an expansion to this, <sighs> I'm concerned. It 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 it, it hyperbolizes the thing. And I had said to the Twin River people, uh, who I respect, and Senator Rogerio, at the time that they were doing this. They could have slipped in a referendum in the last June session for November. They weren't ready to be up and running until after Thanksgiving anyway. Bang, zoom, they could have just done it in lockstep. Absolutely. I mean, so do you want to shut it down while you, uh, well, first of all, when we come back, we're going to talk about whether this is legit. Because this might be, because I hate to break it to you, lawyers cost money. He knows he is one. We'll be right back. <laughs> you may end up with a situation where uh, there's mobile sports betting. I'm concerned about that because I think it makes it, it really makes it too easy for people to gamble. Uh, and you don't have the, maybe the controls. If you go and engage in sports betting at Twin River, you've got signs, hey, if you've got a problem, check in here, right. we can help you. On your phone, where's that? Okay, so that's Pat Kelly from PC who studies this stuff, was here the other day. Uh, when it's here, the, the idea of what's happened here is the expansion of sports gaming will will call for you have to go to Twin River, you have to sign up, and then you're a player. And then now anywhere in the state you want to make a bet, you can do it from here. I get the convenience issue. Joe Larissa, the lawyer who will be here tomorrow and who Brendan may hire um, to litigate, has a very really interesting point. He says, well, wait a second. If this is all in accord with the, with the already constitutionally approved gaming, and now that this is okay, What's going to prevent you from playing blackjack on this? It's going to be a virtual casino on your iPhone. Yeah, and I think, again, I'm not weighing in ideologically mm -hmm. or philosophically yet, but I think these are the kinds of things that the voters may have wanted to consider. You know, and, and, and to their credit, last night the House Republicans put up a, an amendment uh, which failed miserably, but they put up an amendment to seek a Supreme Court advisory opinion. 
as to whether or not the online portion of this should go to uh, the voters. And I think part of the arguments were that that's, there's a big concern there. You know, how, you know, how much do we want uh, you know, little Susie in, in, uh, you know, in her living room with her friends playing roulette and blackjack? Well, here's the risk. Here's the roulette roll by refuting that very well-constructed thought, that amendment that says, hey, why don't we check with the Supreme Court before we pass this, which is not unprecedented. Governor Kacheri did it. The roll of the dice is, is that you're full of it, and you can't finance the litigation, and there doesn't seem to be any other interested party to do that. So what is the story? You want the GOP to be the client? GOP wouldn't be the client. Um, uh, let me just say, since you started this show by saying that, uh, that there's not a pot to uh, to pee in. Uh, I, don't think, I don't think I said that here. <laughs> uh, but for the GOP. I might have said that on the radio. I, don't. I looked up our public, our finances. Oh. And okay. as of 2019, <laughs> $23,918.44. Congratulations. Available cash on hand. Wow. <laughs> now, it's another story if the Board of Elections would allow us to use any of those funds. Or your own board would decide that you wanted to use those funds for litigation. Yes. You'd, you'd, have, you'd have to vote on that. And we have more in the federal, and this could impact federal. Having said that... Are you going to be a conduit to raise some dough to pay Larissa to do a lawsuit? That's the, that, cut, the, that cuts to it. The grassroots are interested in fighting this because of the good government aspect, or bad government in this case, aspect of not checking the constitutionality, having the people decide, not the politicians, as Joe said in his article. Yeah, and tomorrow we'd have to see what Larissa's uh, projection is as to whether a court would stay the operations, suspend the operations at Twin River while this thing is potentially adjudicated. I'm not sure it would. I don't think it would. I mean, I think there would have to, the irreparable harm is a tough standard to overcome, speaking on my lawyer hat. I'll let Joe opine as to that. I think it would stop the online from starting. Which is not scheduled until later in the year anyway. Correct. Is this your last stand as chairman of GOP, or are you rethinking this thing? Um, well, since the third floor is probably watching over at the State House, um, it's not my last stand. I'm going to, oh, I'm not going to be chairman if that's what you're, you're not, asking. You're, not, you're absolutely out. You're not seeking re-election. I'm not seeking re-election. There are five very able-bodied candidates. Clearly, I made being Rhode Island a GOP chair great again. And so, you know, let somebody else take the mantle. Well, what is your last stand? What is your, la I'm out of time, but give me a, a tease. What, what is your next fight? Uh, uh, I think this is this is the fight, but also uh, line item veto. Oh, line item veto. Bleh. Because the firewall, because Nick's a firewall on 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 only the, the line speaker. item veto. Yes. Well, I'm with you on that. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Dan. Interesting stuff. Final word tomorrow. The conundrum on this whole sports gaming thing is, if you really don't have a problem with it, but you do have a problem with the process, is it worth? actually pursuing and litigating on the process when you could potentially win that case and have a constitutional victory, only it's kind of like the recall election in Fall River. It's like you fight the constitutionality of it, and then you say, okay, now I'll vote for it. Because most people would probably, even those who have a constitutional problem with it, would probably say, okay, I'll vote for it because you gave me the right to vote for it. Not quite Fall River, but sort of. Anyway, the lawyer on it tomorrow night, and we'll talk to you on the radio at 3 on WPRO. Good night.